Yeah, I was just about to ask that. If that uh, is still something you're seeing in Russia. Are you seeing a generation shift, though? I mean, in many ways in the U.S., our comparison would be maybe some of the more conservative politics pushing towards a more progressive mindset, you know, across the population. Do you see something similar with pushing away that a lot of the Soviet culture aspects that maybe were ingrained in some of the older generations in Russia as well? Or are the younger generations still finding themselves at least in, in a few ways attached? You know, I was much more optimistic, uh, 10 years ago, because 10 years ago, as, as I've already mentioned, there were huge protest rallies in Russia. And um, that time I was running Russia's most influential independent news TV channel, oppositional news TV channel. And I was absolutely sure, sure that we were prevailing. I was sure that uh, the majority is on our side, that all young Russians, they do not share that um, com- that Soviet uh, uh, stereotypes, and they they want Russia to be more than democratic, and that was obvious. We when when we uh, looked at uh, all those protest rallies, we saw those bright young faces that didn't want um, uh, any kind of dict- dictatorship. So I was I was really optimistic. Mm. What happened next? Uh, didn't um, didn't break my faith. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, we have all reasons to be worried because uh, we we have witnessed ten years of uh, uh, terrible brainwashing, uh, and that and yes, uh, young younger gener- younger people are not watching television. They are less less um, influenced by by propaganda by by the brainwashing. But definitely, uh, there are consequences. And, uh, and definitely, a lot of people they 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 don't share uh, Soviet prejudice. For example, um, I know that uh, although there is a stereotype that Russian uh, society is very homophobic, I know that it's not because la- last year when when I came out and and married my long time partner, uh, and we were cursed by by Russian propaganda. We were we, we made all the headlines and all the propagandist TV channels. Uh, but it meant nothing. We 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 received only best wishes uh, from from ordinary Russians. We received thousands of congratulations from from all parts of Russia, from uh, all different uh, um, people. And it was it was clear for, for for me that was a very clear proof that that actually for for younger people they they just don't get it. They 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 just are not into that. Um, homophobic um, old so- Soviet prejudice, but still, uh, in some ways, in terms of uh, Russia against the West, in terms of the geopolitical uh, prejudice, uh, the, if if propaganda works, it works there. So I, I think that might be the most uh, the most serious consequence of Putin's propaganda. So even after he leaves, he would leave uh, Russia with uh, a lot of even younger brainwashed people who uh, who would believe that that Russia is doomed to fight against the West, that the West hates Russia. And uh, even more, they, they might think that it wasn't Russia that attacked Ukraine, but actually uh, the war was initiated by by the United States and Ukraine was used only as a proxy. So you spoke about your past running one of the largest media oppositions in Russia and very successful and something that is critical in any country, but one, especially with heavy propaganda is even more critical. Can you speak to one, what inspired you to start that journey, you know, many years ago, as well as what were some of the difficulties and challenges that you ran up against facing such a overwhelming force of propaganda you know i think that was easy that was very easy to start because we 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 were young and bold and very naive we didn't we didn't know that uh we were not allowed to start that we didn't ask kremlin for the permission and that's that's why no one uh banned no one prohibited us from from starting that tv channel and very soon we realized that we are very needed. There was a huge demand uh, 
um, um, for for that type of uh, of news television, we were. I, I would always argue with international uh, journalists, with American journalists, who, uh, who told me that you are as oppositional TV channel, and I would say no, we are not oppositional. We are normal television. Others are propagandists, and we are normal. We are doing our job. We are covering all the important news. We give floor to representatives of the opposition as well as the government. We we had all the ministers. We we had, we had the, that time president of Russia was Dmitry Medvedev, and we interviewed president. We we were we were normal. At the same time, we were covering all the protest rallies. We were making our um, anti-corruption investigations. So we, we, we were doing a very good job. Uh, and it was very, um, it was very um, exciting for me when, when I started as an editor-in-chief. I started receiving lots of letters from very distant Russian provinces and, and uh, ordinary people were uh, complaining for their bureaucrats, for their local authorities, and they were asking uh, me to start an investigation and like to um, to find out the truth uh, about their lo- local um, uh, chief. And it was it meant a lot because they knew that they can trust, they could trust us. They couldn't trust their local authorities. They could trust us. Uh, that that was a very very good start, and uh, we. I think we um, we had bright perspectives. By 2014, we had um, as much as 20 million households watching us daily. So it's it's only daily statistics. Uh, but unfortunately, the TV channel was almost destroyed uh, in the beginning of 2014. Uh, that happened approximately one month before the Crimea annexation occupation. Uh, we it was very uh, very tricky uh, pre-orchestrated campaign and uh, all the uh, cable and satellite networks dropped us within one week uh, and we, we lost more than 99 percent of, of our audience and and uh, continued working only as an online TV channel uh, online channel um, so uh, but I must say that that uh, that TV channel still works now, not from Russia but from Amsterdam, um, and it's still it's still needed by a lot of Russians. So so speaking, uh, if Russians need the, the truth, if they they want to know it, or if they know what's really happening, yes, they do. The uh, the recent statistics um, for online TV channel that that is broadcasting only uh, by YouTube is uh, approximately 20 million uh, unique u- users uh, per month. And uh, out of those 20 millions, uh, 13 millions are uh, in, uh, inside of Russia, uh, Russians in Russia, and 7 million uh, are Russians outside of the country. Soviet regime with Communist Party or even with Komsomol doesn't share um, any Soviet um, um, prejudice. He doesn't view Ukraine as uh, as Soviet, Soviet colony, and and that's very symbolic. He represents the population of Ukraine today. He uh, he is purely a uh, symbol of that um, dignity of uh, of Ukrainian nation. And on the contrary, uh, I, I I must um, admit that in Russia we still have the first generation. We still have communists because Vladimir Putin used to be a member of Communist Party, and actually most of his life, still, uh, e- even thirty years after after collapse of the Soviet Union, most of his life he uh, he spent as a member of Communist Party.